everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I am doing a sit down video alone without Grayson to kind of talk a little bit about pregnancy after infant loss. If you guys have missed our other update, I am currently expecting our second baby. And I definitely do wanna do a, another video kind of getting more of Grayson's perspective on this and like what it's like to be the spouse in this situation. But I also just wanted to do like a fun little pregnancy update, share my symptoms with you guys, and then kind of just scratch the surface on what it's like to be pregnant after loss. I think it's gonna take a really long time and several different videos and stuff to kind of truly break down all that encompasses pregnancy after infant loss. But I did just want to share it because that's obviously what I'm going through and I know a lot of people who follow me now, especially after what happened, um, might be on a similar boat and want to kind of just know that they're not alone in this or if you know someone who's going through it and you kind of want a little bit more insight in regards to it. So that's kind of what I'm going to touch base on today and I took a couple notes just to kind of remember a little bit. I'm in my third trimester and I'm out of breath very easily. So also please just bear with me. I'm gonna start off with just a fun little pregnancy update when it comes to symptoms and how it's been physically. So this is my second pregnancy and I'm expecting my second girl. People always say that like symptoms can be different if you have a boy or a girl. So I will share what that's like. First trimester, I was very nauseous and very fatigued, kind of what you usually expect in your first trimester. But how it differed from my first pregnancy is, in my first pregnancy with Aliyah, I was always nauseous and always tired, but like I never threw up. But this pregnancy, I've thrown up a lot more and I'm super gaggy to like so many things that I see or that I smell. But that's been very different. So I'd say the level of nausea is like way worse this time around. And my second trimester was honestly pretty similar to my first pregnancy. Once I hit my second trimester, like the bump is still small, but it's showing and it's cute. Um, you get your energy back, you're not nauseous, you kind of feel a little bit more like yourself. So honestly, second trimester was pretty great overall as far as physical symptoms go. The other thing I will say is like symptom wise, that kind of goes into the emotions, I guess, is this time around this pregnancy instead of enjoying any moment i was symptom free I think to myself like oh my god like something's wrong i'm not pregnant anymore it's so different from my pregnancy with Aliyah because whenever i was symptom free <laughs> with Aliyah, i was like oh my god thank god like i don't want to feel pregnant right now so it varies in that sense and now that i'm in my third trimester i feel a little bigger i'm out of breath faster i'm starting to feel a lot more tired throughout the day. One of the other things is they always say that like the more pregnancies you have, the sooner you start to show. And I definitely feel that to be true this time around. I feel like my bump made more of an appearance a lot sooner and has gotten a lot bigger faster than it did with Elia. I'd say now that I'm like near in the end, they're kind of pretty like similar for the time frame. Yeah, I think I definitely feel that. So I'd say that's honestly the recap of my symptoms. I don't feel like I had anything major and I'm honestly super thankful. Like the same thing with my pregnancy with Elia, like I had your basic pregnancy symptoms I feel like, but I, I'm super thankful and I don't take for granted that like I didn't have anything super severe. The only thing I did have both pregnancies was during my first trimester, I was low on progesterone, so I had to take a progesterone supplement, but that's all good to go. Like everything's been taken care of and um, it was never an issue towards the end of my pregnancy with Aliyah and it hasn't been an issue this pregnancy either. Now, as far as the emotional side of everything, this is where I find it really hard to communicate and I feel like there's so much to unpack with it and I know there's gonna be a lot that I'm gonna forget or jump from and it might sound like I'm just rambling. So again, bear with me, but my pregnancy with Aliyah, I was super excited. I obviously had the concern that I would miscarry or that something would happen. And I feel like that's just a very normal, common fear for 
moms to have, whether you're a first time mom or not. And especially because my progesterone was low during the first trimester, like I was concerned that I'd miscarry with Aliyah. And then as time progressed, I was like, okay, like everything's looking good. Like I'm in the clear, I'm in this, what they say is the safe zone. Like I'm good to announce. I let myself get really excited. You know, I got her clothes, prepped her, her nursery, like did all of these things. And like my entire pregnancy with Alaya, I got to experience it outside of the lens of loss. And for that, I'm super thankful. And so while I had concerns of miscarrying and things like that with her pregnancy, whereas with this pregnancy, I obviously had those concerns of miscarrying and stuff, but now it's, it goes beyond that because while I can rest in the fact that like, okay, I carried Alaya to term, I can carry this baby to term. Like my concerns are more so surrounding the birth and not so much the pregnancy as a whole, even though I do have those concerns. And I think this pregnancy, because all I know now is loss and I'm tainted by like loss and grief and what I know can happen again, it's really hard for me to enjoy this pregnancy. I feel like it's a constant battle of being really happy and really excited and super thankful that like I even get to be pregnant again, that I didn't miscarry, that I'm nearing my third trimester, that like everything is looking good, this baby's great, healthy, growing strong, all of these things. But then there's the other side of it where it's like this entire experience just feels like a giant tease because I don't know at the end of it if I'm gonna get to bring a baby home or not. And that's just the reality of it. Like regardless of how many times someone tells me like it's gonna be okay or I tell myself it's gonna be okay or I hear stories. It's just like once once this has happened to you, it's like you're you're never not gonna think, oh, this could happen again. I feel like even when when someone who hasn't experienced loss comes across our story, I think obviously they get scared and they're like, oh my God, could that be me? But I think it's a lot easier to dismiss that reality and just be like, oh no, like it, it, that really sucks, but it's not gonna be me, if that makes any sense. But now that it's happened to us, like I can't just dismiss it. So emotionally, it's definitely been a lot of things and I know it's been the same for Grayson, but I'm not gonna speak on that because like, I would like for him to kind of share that. When it comes to my grief and how I grieve Alaya and you know, the fact that we lost her, I feel like I can't do it the same way I used to prior to being pregnant. When I wasn't pregnant, I could just like sit down, have a good cry, think about her. But this time around, I don't know if part of it is because I am so like gaggy <laughs> this pregnancy or if it's because I'm having to like shove down a lot of her reality that whenever I do allow myself to get to the point where I try and have a good cry about Alaya or I try and grieve her, like it just escalates so quickly and like I throw up without a fail and it's just not, it's not good. And I know a lot of people say that like, whatever you feel the baby feels and so that just brings that in itself just brings me a lot of guilt because i don't want this baby that i'm currently expecting to only know sadness and grief and like crying and like i don't want this baby to just be feeling those emotions i wouldn't want it to feel these emotions period but like i'm only human so with that I feel like I've had to shut off a lot of my grief with Aliyah and I think in part that's communicated to a lot of people that like I'm doing okay and that like everything is good now and like everything is going to be good moving forward when that is just not the case. I think once this baby is born and she's no longer in me, I'm going to have a moment where I'm going to grieve hard. I know that postpartum is going to be a lot. It is a lot whether you have experienced loss or not. There's a bunch of hormones, a bunch of emotions, but I think it's going to be that much more 
when we get to experience the joy of all these things with this baby, but also tangibly see everything we missed with Aliyah. And I think also like with this pregnancy, don't get me wrong, like Grayson and I are both super excited. We both really wanted this baby. We've always wanted to have multiple kids even prior to our loss with Aliyah. And like, yes, the unfortunate reality is like we're having this baby in hopes of helping us heal a little more and kind of get to do the things that we didn't get to do with Aliyah. But in no way is this baby meant to just replace Aliyah. This baby's meant to be its own person, have its own life. I don't want it to ever feel the pressure of having to like fix this hole for us because that's just not her job and it's not fair to her and it's not fair to Aliyah. As a mom, like for Aliyah, like reminding myself that I'm not just trying to replace her or guilty for this baby that like I'm not putting too much pressure on it. I also want to be at a place where I can be honest about like how I'm feeling and I want this baby to know of Aliyah and of our journey and what that's been like. But it is hard to find that balance. I also very much want this baby to know that it is very loved very anticipated, very celebrated. For a while we thought we weren't gonna do like a gender reveal or a baby shower or anything like that because it just seemed too painful to do. And in many ways it was, even when we did do them, but I'm very thankful that we did because I want this baby to know that like she celebrated and loved and like also at the end of the day, like we don't know what the outcome is gonna be with this baby. So we want to do as much as we can while we still have her. I don't even know if that begins to scratch the surface or how better to explain that. Maybe if we do like a Q and A video and you guys ask me some questions, more in depth questions of like anything in specific that you wanna know in regards to what it's been like to be pregnant after loss, on the emotional aspect of everything. Now that I'm nearing the end of my third trimester and we're preparing for this baby's arrival, I think we've definitely just kind of gotten into like the swing of things, of prepping for her, getting the car seat out, the nursery stuff out. But it is so, so different. There's not really a whole bunch of excitement like it was with Delia where I was like, oh my God, like I can't wait to set up the room. And this time around, it's kind of like, Okay, I just need to get these, this stuff done just in case we get to bring her home. Like, I'll have everything ready, but like I don't want to get too emotionally invested because I know what it's like to have to put everything away. When I wasn't pregnant and we had lost Aliyah, like there was nothing for us to really look forward to. And that isn't to say that like life still wasn't good. Like there was still a ton of blessings, still so much for us to be thankful for and so much of life that we did enjoy. But there was always that added reality of like, it doesn't matter how good it gets, like our daughter is still dead. And in many ways, even being pregnant now and being excited about this baby and being like, oh my God, like, we're finally gonna get to like meet one of our babies again and hopefully get to take her home and finally get to do parenthood things and and share these experiences with her. Like it's gonna be so good, but our other daughter is still dead. I don't know how better to express it than like, there. those are just the two realities we live in and we will forever live in. And it doesn't matter how good something gets, like we're still gonna have that grief. And even though we have that grief, like things are still good. I hope that in everything that I'm communicating, like the joy that we're gonna experience with this baby is in no way gonna cancel out the grief that we're gonna experience for Aliyah. But in the same way, like all the grief that we have and love that we have for Aliyah is in no way gonna cancel out the joy and the excitement and the love that we have for this baby. Let me see if I forgot anything else. Yeah, the last thing that I wrote down was about celebrating this baby. So like I said, we did the baby shower and all of these things. And I think as time progresses and we get further along, we're trying our best really to just look at the positive side of things, but it is a very difficult thing when your reality is lost. It's hard to find a balance of how much to celebrate, how much to guard my heart, how much to allow myself to 
really dive into it and it's hard because some days i'm like man i want to just like take advantage of the time that i do have with this baby because with alaya i only had my pregnancy and so i need to take advantage of it to the fullest take all the pictures do all the celebrations do all the things but then the other side of me is like i don't want to have anything to do with it because what even is the point of getting so emotionally invested again i think the last thing that i'll end with which i think i kind of already touched base to be honest i'm not really sure where i went with this video because like i said i feel like it's it's so many different things going on because i'm pregnant again and also because i feel like i have to shut off so much of my reality with Elia to get through this pregnancy again i feel like a lot of people just think we're doing okay and in many ways we are because like i said this has given us a lot of hope and a lot of excitement and a lot of things to look forward to again but it in no way fixes what happened or what we're going to continue navigating i know it's going to be a lot when we try to navigate parenthood because we're never going to know it outside the lens of loss we're never going to know hitting milestones outside the lens of grief like all of these things that i know are going to come up throughout our lifelong journey because this is a lifelong journey like it's it's not just something that happened two years ago we had some time to heal and like now we're okay. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and end it there because I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what topics I've hit even with my notes. But all that to say, this pregnancy has been overall really great and we're super thankful and we're doing our best to celebrate her and prepare for her arrival while also doing our best to be true to our grief and what we're feeling and all of these things i will say if you guys wanted me to do more of like a q a video where you ask me just more specific questions about certain things when it comes to pregnancy after loss or maybe how to help someone or how to be there for someone who's going through pregnancy after loss let me know in the comments below and i will gladly do a video it might help a little bit with the, with the direction of how i answer and communicate these things with you guys but yeah i mainly just wanted to hop on here give you guys a little pregnancy symptom update like i said i'm in my third trimester we're nearing the end do you want to do another video with Grayson to kind of get his perspective on everything. So stay tuned for that. I feel like I only began to scratch the surface of what pregnancy after loss is. I think there's so many different layers and so many added realities um, to this whole experience and this whole journey that I could go on and on and on and on and on. And yeah, so I'm just gonna <laughs> stop it there for now who knows maybe i'll do a part two or whatever but just let me know in the comments what you guys are curious to know more of thank you guys so much for taking the time to sit down and watch this video and kind of yeah just get a little bit more about my pregnancy this time around and if you guys like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys next time